Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name's Kayleen and I'm your host and today we're bringing it old school, all around just old school, um, <laughs> in a very uh, old school filming spot because the light is really great in here right now. Um, also, it's I've got my son upstairs to try and nap. He's three and he doesn't really nap much anymore, but he's got the sniffles today. So I'm going to use this quiet opportunity to do as quick of a podcast as I can do, go through the things that I've been working on, the things that are going into the shop this weekend. Oh, I got to grab a couple of things. Whee! <laughs> All right. So I, oh, it's been a while. Um, so things, let's, let's start with a little update. Um, it's been busy this month. Uh, the focus for me this past month has been really just trying to get all the Halloween boxes packed up and out of my house. Um, I've had a lot of trouble lately with organization, trying to realize like how my brain now works because things have changed over the last year for me in terms of like, how do I organize my time? And I find it very difficult and overwhelming uh, when I didn't use to, and a lot of small tasks just get overwhelming. So um, I've been spending a lot of this month trying to really focus myself in organization, which I'll share a little bit about what I've been doing, and then I wanted to share the things that I've been working on, uh, some art projects, knitting, a crochet commission that I'm working on actually today, um, and then some news about the shop. So let's just get into everything. If you're new, welcome. Uh, this is a podcast mainly about knitting, yarn dyeing, cars driving down the street. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, and pretty much anything that I'm getting up to. And I try and do this at least once a month to really update you on, you know, what's new, what's happening with me and what's happening with the shop because I know some of you guys don't follow me over on other social media and this is the way that you get your updates. So if you're not already and you'd like to, please do follow me on Instagram. Um, I've changed my handle, it is Little Bean Loves Yarn. That's a recent occurrence over the last couple of months. So if you search me over there, you'll find me as Little Bean Loves Yarn. And, um, that's where I do most of my updating in terms of what I'm working on in the moment and also what's going into the shop during an update. So for this week's update, I've got several colors to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colors that are going into the shop tomorrow at 1 p.m. Um, all on everyday sock because that's what I've got on hand and that's what I've been dying on lately. Um, and then Man, I just got so much on my mind. Um, apologies for that. The things that I've been working on with organization, apologies, that's loud. I've been doing a lot of apologizing. Stop apologizing. Talking to you, Kayleen. Okay. The things that I've been doing to help myself organize um, is trying to block schedule myself. For those who might be new to this channel or don't know, I am a stay-at-home mom. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old, and this year my daughter my five-year-old is in school five days a week so it's a welcome break from being on all the time with two kids who are very rambunctious and hyper because this is the age of energy so um and when my son is three and he we finally found a daycare for him two days a week that he's been going to all summer that is willing to accommodate his allergies it's private small license the whole nine it took a very long time it's like a finding a needle in a haystack, so to speak. So um, I have a couple of days a week where my schedule is much more free and I've found myself more often than not, not working. And more because of a feeling of feeling overwhelmed and dealing with anxiety and depression, um, more depression um, and trying to figure out where feelings are coming from. Um, I find that if I have too much to do, I take everything at once and I'm not appropriately putting out like, oh, I will do this in the morning, I will do this in the afternoon, whatever. So I decided this past week that I needed to start doing scheduling for myself to structure myself better because now that the kids are in other places and I have more time to myself, I need to be able to use it better and to feel like I can accomplish both what has to be done at home and what has to be done for the shop and for my business 
and for this podcast so that I can film more and do more. So um, I started a journal and I also started using my phone as a tool. So what I did was created a block schedule for myself here and I have all of the um, times of day, like the major blocks of the day that occur. So we have the morning time, we have errands, lunch, work, dinner, bedtime, and relaxation. And so um, they're like two-ish, two to two and a half hour blocks. Lunch is a little shorter because usually that's very um, concise. Usually we just come home for lunch and then we do something in the afternoon. And so for the days that my son is home, this is very, very helpful. On the days that he's not, I can just extend my blocks. So what I've done is set my alarm on my phone to go off at certain times of day to show like, okay, this block is ending soon, this block is starting, so that I know I have an audio cue for myself so that I'm not consumed in something. What ends up happening for me is that I, I get into something really deeply and I, I love to do that because that's how I learn and that's how I, you know, make the most of like my brain. It's I get into it and I'm in it for an hour, two hours, three hours, and I lose track of time. When Facebook or Instagram are that delving time, that's a waste of time, but um, in terms of like the things that I could be doing. So having that audio cue for me is like, oh, I should be starting lunch soon, or oh, I still need to go grab the laundry, or what haven't I done in this time period that I should have done. Um, and if I don't finish something, I'm trying not to get too hard on myself that the day can just flow on and we can do it tomorrow or we can do it at a later time during the day. So that's really what I've been focusing on. The yarn boxes for October have gone out, so everybody should be receiving their boxes within the next couple of days. Hopefully by tomorrow, everybody will have received. I've already gotten some messages from folks who are very excited and can't wait until the 19th. Um, I will be unboxing with the calendar so each day from the 19th to the 31st of October I'm going to be doing a movie marathon where I go through each day of the box I'm going to watch the movie because they're movies um, that I love to watch this time of year and um, show you the yarn and the inspiration behind the yarn and the colorways so that will be on Instagram uh, for that and um, so <laughs> In lieu of dyeing yarn a lot this month, I was focusing on that and then also I was trying to find things that really meant a lot to me, um, especially things like art. So when I'm having trouble with my mood or I'm feeling down or I'm feeling not like myself, I try and go, not like go back in time, but I try to remember the things that really do make me happy that are outside of fiber arts or outside of dyeing yarn because even though it is really fun, it is work. So um, I've been getting back to art recently and if you've seen my posts, I've been doing some portraiture. So this looks kind of funny because it's backwards. Her eye, I'm not entirely happy with this eye, but I'm just calling this piece done. So I did a portrait of a woman it's from a photograph. So I sketched out based on the photograph loosely, colored based loosely on the photograph. And then this was basically done with um, Tombow uh, water-based markers and done on watercolor paper and painted as watercolor. So um, I put the pigment down and then I used my water brush to spread the pigment where I wanted it. And so this is kind of how it came out. I'm also not in love with the ear <laughs> of this picture, but uh, I was having a really, really low day and so I did this and it made me feel a lot better. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And then we've also started a D&D campaign. So my husband and I, and then a few close friends, have started a D&D campaign. Um, that's Dungeons and Dragons, for those who might not know. And it's um, a tabletop type game where it's kind of imaginary role play where you go through a story and you pretty much have a person who's in charge of the story and kind of pushes your characters along the storyline. But you and your comrades and your party are all in it together and you talk as a party and you act as your character so it's really fun it's really open loose gameplay it's really low pressure we laugh a lot we have a lot of fun doing it so we've been doing it every few weeks or so getting together on our campaign and for that I decided I was going to make some props so I need this uh, this is a handmade book this is leather on the outside 
and then I put some corners on the book and the casing is hand sewn so I made my book part uh, with sketch paper so this is toned Strathmore toned gray paper and here's the map of our world and then I plan to do actual journaling in here because my character does keep a journal and also I'm a warlock so my Tome of Shadows is kind of like my Tome of Shadows in a way. Um, so I hand did the book part so I put all the pages together, sewed them all together and then I glued them on a hardback binding so this is press board um, <clears throat> and I glued it myself and bound it myself and I also you know did like the binding part, like pressing the leather all by myself. And then I found some accessories to kind of make it more, you know, my character. So I did this. This was a project for a day. It made me feel really happy to do um, something that was outside the fiber arts world because I was so consumed by those Halloween boxes. Um, so yeah, so those are the non-fiber art things that I've been working on. And then in terms of fiber arts, I have a couple of things here. Where did I put my crochet? I had a crochet project that I was going to share. Let me grab that for you. Ooh. Okay, so I have one crochet project that I'm working on and then two knitting projects, one that you guys have seen and one that you haven't. So in this vein, uh, the project that you have seen before is my changes shawl. Yes, I've picked this up again uh, after quite a long hiatus of being put away. Um, I found it very pleasing to pick up. So the shawl, the change of shawl is a pattern by Mina Phillip. It is a four skein shawl. So there are two skeins of your main color and two skeins, well, 200 grams of contrast. Um, for the original pattern, it's 10, 20 gram minis. For me, I dyed up two 100 gram matching gradients um, to go from the whole spectrum of the rainbow. So this kind of went from a reddish pink all the way through. So the first part of the shawl here, I'll back up, is the center square, which looks a little rectangle because it's not blocked, but um, the center square, you move out into this section, which looks like an arrow up and down like this and then you put half your stitches on hold so this half of my shawl is on hold and you continue along this line down the rest of the shawl before you turn this will be the point of the shawl and then you're going to fill in the section here um, this section is a cluster stitch section and the colors kind of blend together in this section because of the tone of the gray, but I kind of like it that way, so, and I'm interested to see how it moves from this kind of matching. It almost matches the value of the color, if you know what I mean. So if you put the picture black and white, these don't have very high contrast to one another, um, and especially on the camera, but um, it's moving into blue-greens now, so you can see here. You can see pops of blue coming through. So this is the right side of the shawl. And then here's the wrong side of the shawl. You can see all the floats in the back. And this is cluster stitching. So you're doing a series of clusters and slip, knitting, knitting, slipping, clustering. And there's, you know, purling on the wrong side, but I don't mind it. Um, and it's coming along quite well. I am starting the third 10 pattern repeat so you have 10 cluster rows or cluster bunches I don't know what to call it there's a right side there's a cluster back in front and then there's a plain row back in front so I'm going into the third repeat of 10 of those type of rows so making lots of progress so I'm almost 50% done with this shawl and I would like to see it finished <clears throat> sometime um, by the new year hopefully by January or February to have it finished. Um, but I've been just trying to keep myself having not pressure, no pressure on myself about it because the minute I start putting pressure on myself, um, it becomes a bit taxing and overwhelming emotionally. I just feel very um, overwhelmed by that. So I just try to work on it when I feel like it and don't pressure myself to do it 
unless I really want to. So the crochet whip that I just like started stitching on last night is this blanket. This was a blanket made by a customer down at the yarn shop. So I teach crochet down at the, the yarn shop close to me, which is Marblehead Knits. And I do commission work, usually helping to seam projects together um, and mostly crochet because a lot of the ladies who frequent the store aren't necessarily crocheters themselves and they they like to, they want to get their projects finished quicker or they don't really have the patience to learn how to crochet, so I offer my services. And so the woman uh, crocheted this blanket and I added a couple of rows of yellow onto one of the sides because they weren't even. I just used up the rest of her yarn. And then I started doing the border. So I've done three rows here of half double crochet in white. And she's using Plymouth Encore, which is a basic acrylic yarn. Uh, so she just gave me the yarn she had and said, here, can you put a border on? And the last row is going to be half double crochet scallops on the edge. So it'll look really cute when it's finished. I'll finish this tonight, give it to her tomorrow. Um, it's not a very large blanket. It's more like a lap size blanket or a baby size blanket, but I think she's going to put it on her couch. So this will be done for tomorrow. I'll work on it during my relaxation time tonight. And then the last knit thing is a new cast on. And normally I don't like to cast on things unless I cast something off or closed off a project or finished something. But, uh, but I really wanted a sweater. <laughs> and I decided to do a worst weight cardigan because I'm very uh, large around the chest. Like I have a pretty small waist. So my weight really is kind of in my hips and also in my chest. And so I'm very nervous about sweater shaping and trying to modify a pattern if I don't know much about sweater construction. So I figured the first sweater project that I'm doing for myself is just going to be a cardigan because I can always alter the button band or the collar that goes around this sweater um, to be closer in so I could close it over more. Um, and that I'm not so worried about having to do a bust adjustment to make room for my chest so that I'm not stretching the sweater and all of that. So the sweater, this is it <laughs> somewhere. This is the beginning of the Georgetown cardigan. And this is a pattern by Hannah Fettig. So here she is. Oh, look. It's focusing on her face. It's like, hey, there you are. Um, so the Georgetown Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. And this sweater for the mostly seamless construction, which is what I'm doing, it starts from the bottom up. So the construction goes up the sweater, you do the front and front, and then you do the sleeves. And then the last step that you do is the collar. And the collar is this lovely ribbed collar that goes around the entire sweater. So I like that I can make this longer. If I really wanted to, I could just make this part wider. So I decided to make the large size sweater, which is the one, two, three, fourth size in. So I, I'm assuming it's small, medium, large, extra large, one X, two X, three X. Um, so this is the large size sweater and I started this last Saturday and most of this was done Saturday and Sunday this past week. So this is a full skein of Barocco Ultra Wool. I thought about dyeing yarn for this sweater but I didn't want the pressure to be put on myself for that. I just wanted to do the sweater knit and get a feel for it before I decided to use hand dyed yarn for it because I didn't want to worry about alternating skeins, losing my place, worrying about my dye lot and all of that. I just wanted a relaxing knit. So here's the bottom of the sweater and it's a one by one rib for about, I don't know, 12 rows or so, 13 rows. And then we start going up and we're doing shaping along the side seams. So here are the side markers can't stretch it out on this. This is um, the Leica, Leica bamboo needles that are US size 7 and they are 32 inches. So it is not, 
I can't stretch this out, but I feel like I'm not going to have to make any more modifications to the pattern. I don't, I might not have to make the button band wider to fit me. So here's that. This is one skein, so I'm about to put on my second skein. And I like to do it at the end of a row, so I just used up as much yarn as I could. Um, and again, this is in Barocco Ultra Wool, um, which is a machine washable wool, easy wear, but I don't have any sweaters for the fall, winter, and I'm a, I'm, I don't like wearing winter coats, like I prefer to wear a sweater or a hoodie, and so I think it will be nice to have this because the majority of the winter, this is what I prefer to wear until it gets too cold, but you know, I, I just prefer that. So that is what I've been working on in terms of knitting and crochet, and it's been uh, good also to do things that are a little outside my comfort zone, something that's a little different that I wouldn't normally do. Um, I don't know if you guys are sweater knitters or sock knitters or what you like to work on, but I found that I'm starting to get over my fear of sweaters. I, it's been moving along pretty quickly. I think this is a six skein uh, project for my size. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, seven skein. Seven skein project for my size. And I'm already through the first skein, so I'm like, I only have six skeins left to go, and it moves along pretty quickly. And I feel like this is the longest stretch of the sweater, which is going up the decreases and then increases on the back. And so I'm going to be doing the third decrease of four in like two rows. So I'm feeling pretty good about the point where I'm at right now. Um, yeah, so if you have a favorite sweater pattern, please leave it in the comments below. I'd like to do some browsing um, to plan my next sweater project. I have a couple that I thought I would like to do, um, to do the Find Your Fade DK, the DK sweater, um, DK weight, because that's what I prefer knitting with, uh, versus worsted, um, and dyeing on as well. So, I don't know. Anyway, okay, let's get on to shop news and dyeing news. So this month has been pretty slow for me in terms of dyeing. I still have a ton of stock left in the shop. Oh, I have to bring more yarn. One minute. Some skeins to show you that I wasn't able to show you last time, I don't think, because I dyed these in between podcasting. So anyway, okay. So things that are in the shop. I still have a bunch left in the shop. I have some items that are on sale right now. So my um, Lux Sock, which is my MCN blend. I have several skeins that are still available that I've marked down for you. And I also have my Simple Sock, which is my single ply fingering weight yarn on sale. Uh, with some of the summer colors that are marked down as well. So I encourage you guys to go check that out in the sale section of my site. And also, which is littlebeanlovesyarn.com, blah, 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 put it in the corner, whatever. Um, and then the things that I dyed in between podcasting were a couple of fall inspired sets. So this first set is a trio. It's 50 grams a piece and this is called Falling Leaves. I think that's what I called it and it's a multi-dimensional tonals uh, you know with some slight speckles and variegation uh, but it's very goldy brown green rustic looking and I thought these would be very nice to so as a trio, because you could use them in one project um, that's kind of fall cozy themed, maybe pair it with a speckled yarn or something that's really deep, and I think that would look very nice. And then the other thing that I dyed was a self-striping yarn called Fall in Flames, and this is the, I braided up this undyed skein because the skeins are about six and a half meters long. Uh, but it is a two striper and one stripe is variegated kind of fire like fall leaves just in this skein right now so so it is um, variegated red deep red and orange and a golden golden yellow and it fades into a uh, tonal brown uh, and this is what it looks like skeined up and it's a two striper and it's beautiful and it's called Fallen Flames. And I still have several skeins of this available. I think I have four or five skeins left uh, from the original dye lot. And I won't be dyeing this again this season. So if you are interested in this, please do go and pick it up. It is in the shop right now. 
Uh, same with the Fallen Flames trio. This is a one of a kind trio. I did not write down the recipe for this. I wrote the recipe for this, but I did not write the recipe for this. So if you want this, there are two sets I think available. So if you want it, you should go grab it and then this will not be dyed again. So if you're wanting those lovely fall tones in those colors, then please do. Um, I encourage you to go grab them. Okay, so things that are going to be listed this weekend. So there are some dyes. So this is the other half of the husband dyes my yarn um, thing from the summer. So my birthday was 1st of August and my husband helped to dye some yarn, which there's a couple in the shop that he dyed um, that are World of Warcraft themed. And these are the other two that are World of Warcraft themed. And they're kind of bright, but I think this one would be really fun for Halloween. So I'm just going to put the the names of the colors on the screen because I cannot remember, but I know this is a warlock uh, orc warchief. And so it's a fluorescent green and fluorescent orange and a bold purple and black speckled. So pretty much speckled all around and lovely. And then this one is Anduin Wynn. Um, Anduin Rin. Win, Rin, oh, can't speak. Um, this is one that Tyler dyed, and it has some purple speckles, blue and yellow. And then I had a customer re uh, purchase a skein of Wildfire Whiz Bangs in everyday sock, but for some reason my website wasn't updated well. Like the inventory somehow got when I shuffled my inventory between home and the yarn shop, um, I think I made a mistake. I didn't pull, like I pulled the wrong one from the wrong listing. But here is Wildfire Whiz Bangs, and I have three of these that are going in the shop. Um, this is a bright pink, an orange, and yellow um, speckled variegated yarn. And I'll have three of these available in the shop. So I dyed that last week. And then the new dyes that I've worked up, I worked yesterday, which was Thursday, and I spent the entire day dyeing, and I dyed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. <laughs> because if you're gonna go and dye a whole bunch of yarn, you might as well dye multiple colors. And I can dye two, two pans at once, so I dye one colorway in one and one colorway in the other. So I had a bunch of fun. So I wanted to kind of go back in my dye journal and revisit some of the colors that I haven't dyed in quite some time. So, um, namely the Halloween colors from my first Halloween release. If you've been watching my podcast since the beginning, you'll know that I did a Halloween themed um, release for one of my like first really major shop updates. Um, and I had pre-orders open and all of this stuff and it went really well. So I wanted to revisit a couple of those colors that were in that time period. And so one of them that I've been wanting to re-dye, it's called The Dark Mark. And this is really beautiful gray and black tonal with green speckling. And I, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to see in this lighting in this room, but you can see there's green speckles throughout this skein and this is literally my interpretation of the dark mark in the sky over the Quidditch World Cup um, in Harry Potter. So when you see it in the sky that's kind of my interpretation of it. So the dark mark which is quite beautiful. And then another colorway which I haven't dyed I, I cannot remember the last time I dyed this. It must have been two years ago. But this is Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder. And I reworked this colorway to work with my current dye setup. So when I first started dyeing, I had hand painted yarn that I would lay on the table and hand paint. And then I had yarn that I would dye in this tiny little, like, five quart, like, I <laughs> Pan. I don't know how to describe it. Sauce pot? There we go. Like a regular five quart sauce pot that you would like cook pasta in or whatever. And this was like right as I was just beginning to dye. And so I had this color called Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder that I would hand paint. And so I worked the colorway from my recipe from when I used to hand paint 
to do it in the low immersion pans, to do it in the big rectangular pants. And so this is a wonderful color. I love this color. I forgot how much I loved it until I dyed it again and I was like, yes, make me live again. <laughs> so here it is in all its glory and it's taken right from a photo of Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder and I just pulled the colors that I thought represented the the powder itself. Okay. Then there's a couple of other potions that I had in my dye journal. Um, so part of my dye journal, I have to consolidate this, but part of it is on paper and part of it is my computer. And so some of the first colors that I started putting in my computer were some potions. And so I have two potions here. This is the Potion of Dreamless Sleep and this one is Potion of Despair. So here's Potion of Dreamless Sleep, which is uh, has varying tones of teal and blues and green, sage green, teal, I don't know, sea, sea foam, blue, something, I don't know. And then purple and black speckles along this entire skein. So it is a variegated skein that also has speckling. And it's quite lovely. It is one of my favorite colors. It does take me a little while to dye because I have to do a full tonal, like a multi-dimensional tonal in the pan and then speckle. So it takes a couple of steps. Same for this one. So this is Potion of Despair. And this is the potion that um, Dumbledore and Harry had to drink when they went to the lake in the cave uh, before they were attacked by the Inferi. Um, but this is the potion of despair. So it makes you re-experience the worst parts of your life, <laughs> which is pretty dark, but it's a really pretty color. Um, so that's this. It's also a tonal with speckles on top, shades of blue and green and yellow. Overall, it's a pretty um, green, greenish blue color, like not quite teal, not quite green, not quite blue. It's kind of an unusual color. And then, the Pièce de Résistance is the tree series, which I have not dyed together in a very, very, very long time. I had to reformulate these colors to work with the way I now dye yarn. Um, so the three colors are Wigan Tree, Whomping Willow, and Elder Tree. And so these are three trees from the Harry Potter series that I took and dyed up in, as an inspiration. So this is Whomping Willow and this is a pooling colorway and it is kind of a ruddy brown like a maroon with spots of like speckles of darker brown and it fades into a lighter part of the skein which has speckles of orange and green and yellow and so I'll unfold this so you can see more of how it's dyed. So it's mostly brown. I feel like my original colorway was a little, had a little more lightness on this side. I feel like it was more of a 50-50 split, so I'll just end up working that in later dye lots. But you can see the lighter side of this skein has speckles, very subtle speckling of those three colors. And so it pools up in your project, so you'll have mostly brown tonal with specks of lighter brown and green. So it's pretty much like a fall canopy all in one skein, which I love. And I haven't dyed in over a year and I'm so happy that I did dye it because I love this color so much. And then Elder Tree, so a similar feel. So this is also a pooling colorway, but it has very um, muted, cool browns and grays and greens. Uh, throughout the entire skein and I'll show you the division of the skein as well. So this came out more 50-50 more the way I normally would have dyed it um, and you can see the the speckles of gray and brown through the whole skein and into some greens. So it really reminds me of a forest in this skein. I used to dye these in a in a pot so the way I would dye it is I would heat it in the pan, steam it, speckle it, and then dip dye it into water, which is not really how I dye my yarn anymore. So I worked the colorway to work in my hotel pans and to get a similar effect to what I wanted to see 
originally what I had for the colorway. So Elder Tree. This one. This colorway is the most complicated colorway that I dye bar none. So when I start, when I did the tree series, Part of it was an experimentation originally um, to try different methods of dyeing. And so this is a glazed skein. This skein goes through one, two, three, four dye processes, I think, in total. And it is a multi-dimensional skein. It is shades of red and orange and green and purple, all kind of melt into one. And I will there's no, it's, it's more of a variegated glaze tonal. So you can see there are areas that are brighter than others, that are darker than others, that are more brown, more orange, more purple. It is hard to photograph because sometimes it shows purple, sometimes it shows brown. It's hard to replicate. So this is a, a colorway that, it won't vary wildly between dye lots, but there will be a distinct difference between dye lots. So I have four of these that are going into the shop. I encourage you, if you're going to purchase this yarn, to purchase as many as you need for your project because um, I won't be able to replicate, like most hand-dyed yarn, I can't replicate exactly to what you have. Um, but especially skeins like this, I can replicate the color, which I have, but it's it, it varies so much and changes so much from batch to batch in terms of like which tones are more prominent, which tones are less prominent. So if this, if this color sells out and I put up pre-orders, which I might do, um, please let me know if you'd be interested in that. But um, if you ever order this from me as a special order or, you know, can you dye this for me on a special base, great. But please, 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 please make sure that you purchase enough of one dye lot um, for your project. So I dye these in groups of four, so four skeins per pan, and even though I would be dyeing them at the same time, there still may be variation, but I really try to keep things as even as possible. Um, like, this is easy to replicate, easy to replicate for me, easy to replicate, even though they take a long time, easy to replicate. This color, for some reason, is the most finicky and complicated and beautiful coveted <laughs> colors so um so yeah there will be four of these also going in the shop and i do think that these three would make a lovely project together i think it pulls in all of the tones of fall you have the warm tones the cool tones and then the deep jewel tones of a season so definitely recommend checking out the shop tomorrow um the shop update is going to be um, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm in the Boston area, so if you are not in my area, it's easy to Google what time is it in Boston so you know the time difference. Um, so 1 p.m. Eastern Time, which is my time, and it's going to be at my website, littlebeanlovesyarn.com, and what I will do to try and make things easier. I do have a section on the front page of my website that says what's new. Um, so anything that's brand new in the shop that's come in from the last update is in that section. So if you're ever looking for what was the most recent dye, you can go right to that section on the main page. Um, <clears throat> and also if you're just browsing generally, um, you should be able to see the tag on the photo that says new, just like you should be able to see if it's on sale, or, or whatever, you know, you, you should be able to find exactly what you're looking for. And these are all in everyday sock. It's the only base that's going up this weekend. So you can go right to that section for everyday sock yarn and you should be able to find all of these colors. <laughs> all right, so that's a lot. I mean, let's see if I can pick it up. Look at all that yarn. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this update. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up so that I know. Um, if you have any comments or questions, as always, please do leave them in the comment section below. I do read the comments. I do respond to as many comments as I can. Typically, I can respond to them all if I'm not getting super flooded by comments at all at once. Um, and I, I do my best to answer whatever you guys need. Um, and if you have any suggestions on video topics that you'd want to see that aren't a traditional 
traditional podcast, uh, let me know. I do have a variety of content on this channel between live streams, dye tutorials, um, some knitting tutorials, demonstrations of some of my equipment, and also podcasts. So if you have any suggestions on other things that you want to see, uh, please do leave them below and I'll take them into consideration shortly. And I hope that you guys enjoy this nice crisp fall day. It's so beautiful outside today, guys. Oh my gosh. It's so cool and crisp and the leaves are starting to change. And it makes me so happy inside. <laughs> my inner pumpkin spice latte loving soul is just... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video.